Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the We Sportin' Podcast. Here we are. I'm with Tim again. We are here for our second round predictions of the NCAA tournament. And Tim, the first round was, for lack of better words, absolute madness. I mean, I was gonna say this is this is March. This is March. Could not John Rothstein says it over and over again on Twitter. This is March. Tons of upsets on the way. You know, I I, I didn't see the bracket shaping up like this, and neither still did pretty, Tim. Pretty stunned about it, quite honestly. Oh, absolutely. Now, one thing I will point out is the absence of our third member, the crazy one who. Um, <laughs> actually apparently knows what he's doing here <laughs> i i don't i don't understand it i can't come i i don't understand it either but oh, uh, nico is not but... here so it'll be tim and i doing the picks i have nico's picks with me so don't worry we'll still get his input but yeah let's see how we did in the first round and <laughs> in the first round for let's just sum it up we did not do well um right Tim, you are in last place. I mean, hey, you're. I mean, uh, I don't. I don't know what to about tell as you. many games right as wrong. You're sixteen and sixteen. You're sent at five hundred, but but I have no room to talk. I'm not doing much better. I'm at eighteen and fourteen. You have come two games above you, but Nico is somehow at twenty three and nine. Yep. I mean, how the, the man? The, I guess the man knows his madness. The man knows. I, I think. I, I think. I, the best way I have to explain it is that we we looked so much into this that we kind of overlooked the the madness of it all and uh, well, I mean, came back not, to bite us in a lot we, of these. I mean, it's not like we didn't have upsets. I guess. Oh yeah. We just had the wrong upsets. Oh, and and here's and here's the other thing. I mean, when you look at so many of these games, a lot of them, at least. A lot of them that we picked wrong or that I picked wrong specifically could have gone both ways. There's so many, we had so oh, many yeah. close games in this oh, first round. Too. One point games, two point games, overtime oh. games. Like it was insane. Well, that's what made so. the first round so entertaining is that like coming down the stretch, you didn't know who was going to win. And then the upsets. Oh my goodness, the upsets. We have, a, I think we have like darn near every seed a 15 seed, Oral Roberts, a 14 seed. Two wait right two fifteen seeds right am I uh, crazy? Abilene, no 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 Abilene only Christian, one. Abilene so Christian 14, was the fourteen. You had a fourteen. You had a thirteen in Ohio. You had a twelve in Oregon State. And uh, did another twelve seed win? Oh, North Texas sure also won. So that's another. Oh yeah. Thirteen. You, like, you've got the you've got the eleven seed in Syracuse. Like all across the board, you had you had upsets. It's crazy, but it's all right. We're here. We're going to predict the games that happened, even though uh, we got a lot of the first round wrong. But hey, it's madness. Anything can happen. So hey, I'm I'm just I'm just happy to happy to be able to see it all. Happy. Absolutely. Oh, 100 percent. So. All right. Let's get into the second round predictions. Let's see first, if I can get something right this time. Yeah. The first matchup we have on the table is Gonzaga versus Oklahoma. Gonzaga got here by absolutely pounding Norfolk State and Oklahoma beat Missouri by four points. That was a really close game. I mean, One of them could have gone both ways for sure. Could have gone either way. I mean, I had Missouri, Tim had Missouri, Nico had Missouri. So that's where we got wrong. I mean, my prediction in this game is Gonzaga. I mean, let's be, they're still one of the best teams in the nation, regardless. I mean, the winner of Missouri and Oklahoma was going to lose this team, regardless. I have Gonzaga and so does Nico. Yeah. I mean, for, for me, it's I don't see any way Oklahoma could stay stay with this um absolutely monstrous offense with Gonzaga. I mean, no like no disrespect to Norfolk, but I mean Gonzaga put up 98 points. How many times did they even do that in the regular season? I'm sure they got into the 90s a lot. I'm not sure if they ever broke a hundred. So for them to get 98 is incredible. They're playing they're they're playing good basketball as they have all season. Gonzaga, another steamroller, I'd say. Absolutely. Next game we have on the table is Creighton versus Ohio. This is the matchup that I had actually. Tim, I think you had the exact I had both, the, both of the other ones, yeah. Yeah. You had UC Santa Barbara and Virginia. I mean, Creighton, a nail-biter. UC Santa Barbara. Nail-biter. They had that 
one they point had that in this 62. Oh man. And then Ohio. Oh, I know you're upset about the UC Santa Barbara because that was just <laughs> oof. And then Ohio defeated Virginia 62 to 58. So those are both two games that I saw coming. Tim did not. But here I have Creighton. Yeah. And as, as much as I love this Ohio story, I mean, Marcus Zagorowski, Mitch Ballock, Damian Jefferson, that Creighton offense. I mean, when they get rolling, there's nobody that's going to stop them. I'll take Creighton. And Nico also has Creighton here. Interesting. And, and here's here's where um... – I'm actually going to go against the against the table again, and I'm actually going to take Ohio in this one. I didn't take them against Virginia, but I think they convinced me in a, a solid enough uh, solid enough game that they put up that I think they're going to have the defense very similar to what UC Santa Barbara was able to do to Creighton. They were able to stifle them enough to keep it a close game, and I think they're going to be able to edge it out in another close one. Yep. I mean, that'll be a game to watch out for Absolutely. sure. That'll be a close one. Now, the next game we have on the table is USC versus Kansas. I mean, I had both of these teams. Tim, I think you did also. Yep. USC got here by beating Drake pretty handily, and Kansas put the pounding on Eastern Washington, although that game was closer than I thought. It was, it was. close for a while, and that I will was say very high scoring. The final but, score um, was 93-84. to 84. Very so, high scoring. Yeah, that one I did not see coming, but I did see Kansas winning. But I see Kansas losing – here i think usc is going to take this one i mean the mobley duo will overpower the the, the jayhawks and uh yeah i think the trojans are going to roll on nico and i have the same prediction here really interesting right um as much as i love evan mobley and uh the trojans here i i mean i i have to respect kansas's offense and kansas has shown that they've been able to play themselves back into a, a very solid position coming into this tournament despite the rough start um against Eastern Eastern Washington, they they put up a lot of points. Um, and I feel like they're going to be able to do more of the same against USC, and I think the Jayhawks move on. All right. Now the next matchup we have is Oregon versus Iowa. Now, I mean, I predicted this, Tim, you had VCU, but it's sad how Oregon moved yeah, on yeah. because you feel for those VCU kids. Oregon never even won, got to – Oregon got to won that game. Make a statement. No contest – as VCU had multiple COVID cases the day of the game and had to forfeit. And you really hate to see it happen for VCU, especially considering that that was going to be a really great game that I looked forward to watching. Um, you just feel for those VCU kids that they didn't get to, you know, showcase it in March. Absolutely. But Oregon's moving on and facing the Iowa Hawkeyes, who beat Grant and Canyon by double-digit points. Uh, Luca Garza was lighting it up all over the floor. You know, but as good as this Iowa offense was, I'll take Oregon. And even though they haven't played a game, they're still incredibly talented. And like I said earlier, I still think Iowa's one cold shooting streak away from being knocked out of the tournament. So I'll take Oregon in the upset. And who's Nico have? Oh, Nico has Iowa. Gotcha. So th this is one where uh, I'm going to have to to side with Nico as well. Interesting that we've been, other than the Gonzaga game, we've you and I have been. Uh, on opposite sides on each of the last three games. Cause I've got Iowa here as well. Well, I mean, I got to um, get a few games on you and I'm I picking do. with Nico for most of these and Hey, he's doing a lot better than us. So he knows what he's doing somehow. <laughs> I guess so. Um, but yeah, I've got the Hawkeyes in this one. I just think as, as much as Oregon, you're very, you're very right. as a talented team. I think that they're going to have a little bit of a shaky start um, and whether or not they'll be able to overcome that, that's going to be, be the question. But um I just – I like Iowa's offense. Um, I like the play of Luca Garza, and I'm not sure how Oregon's going to be able to stop it. But you're right. Uh, one cold one one cold shooting streak could, could do it for Iowa. But I still see the Hawkeyes coming out of this one. Mm -hmm. Next game we got here is Michigan versus LSU. Michigan won by manhandling Texas Southern, and LSU defeated your Bonnies, St. Bonaventure, 76-61. I know you had the Bonnies going pretty far. But here mm – -hmm. I have LSU, and I know this is a popular upset that I was talking about with a lot of my buddies, you know, Michigan in the second round upset. And I like the way LSU plays. Like the like what I saw against Bonaventure is they controlled the tempo of the game for most of them and forced Bonaventure to play to theirs, like to how they want to play. If LSU can do that against Michigan, they'll win the game because, again, Michigan is still without Isaiah Livers, and that is a big, big loss. And so – basically it comes down to can LSU control the tempo of the game 
and play at their pace. If they do that, they'll win. I got LSU. And Nico has Michigan here. Gotcha. And to split the decision here, I actually am going to go with LSU as well. Um, I love I, I love Michigan as a program. I love what uh, Jawan Howard's been able to do uh, with the team this year. Um, but as you as you said, losing livers is just a massive hole for that Michigan team. And I think, I, I mean, the, props to them had a great showing against a Texas Southern team, but they are they are one off game away um, from just completely getting obliterated. And I think this is an LSU team that could do that to them. Uh, they showed in this in this first game that they were meant to be SEC runners up. Now they may have lost to Alabama in that that conference championship, but they proved that they deserve to be there, and they proved why they should be the eighth seed. And they put a really solid game, and I, I think that they're going to be able to have their way with Michigan a little here. Um, again, I definitely see it as a close one, but I I actually have LSU. Yeah. Well, glad we see eye to eye here. Let's see if we can catch up to Nico on some games. <laughs> Next game Gotta slated hope. is Colorado versus Florida State. Now, I know we both had Florida State winning, but we both had Georgetown, and yeesh, I feel I feel bad for the Hoyas. Yeah, they, really they just they came out flat. We, 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 we predicted that we predicted the- that they were going to be able to to keep up their their little streak, but uh, props to Colorado, they came out with one hell of a performance. I think we got too swept up in Hoya paranoia for a bit. Um, Maybe a little bit. And we really underlooked the Buffaloes, how good they really are. Absolutely. And that's that's why I have Colorado in this next game, because they came out, they shot lights out versus Georgetown, put 96 points on the board. And Tim, in the first video, you kept repeating the theme of being a good free throw shooting team and how important that is down the stretch. I thought about it and I'm like, you know what? Even though your logic may not have played out that well in some of these games, it is not flawed, like at all. It's good logic. And I look at Colorado, they're second in the nation in free throw percentage behind Oral Roberts, which Oral you saw Roberts how they is, did. Yeah, is also still in. But I mean, I have Colorado here. I think they can play against Florida State. I also just don't like this Florida State team. My mind has not changed about that. I got Colorado. However, Nico has the Seminoles. So, Tim, you going to split the decision? Who do you got? I am going to split the decision, and I have to agree with you on this one, and I'm going to go with Colorado. With the two of, with the two of these games, you see uh, Colorado putting up one hell of a performance, shooting the lights out. Like you said, um, their free throw percentage is massive. If this game gets close, I, I see Colorado being able to pull it out. And I, we both had the opinion that we don't particularly like this Florida State team, and their first-round game didn't really do anything to convince me otherwise. I mean, a 10-point win for sure, but only 64 points. Um, against a, a hot a hot shooting team like this uh, Buffalo's team coming in, I I just don't see how Florida State's going to be able to pull it out. I really like how how the Buffaloes are playing right now, and I see that pushing them into the Sweet 16. Yep. Next matchup we got is an 11 versus a 14. UCLA versus Abilene Christian. Who in the world would have saw that coming? Exactly. I, mean, I was about to I say. I saw, saw an 11 seed beating BYU, but I picked just the wrong not the right one. one. I picked the wrong one. I picked Michigan State. I UCLA is here. I mean, Tim, you and Nico both picked BYU in this game, and UCLA took them down by double digits. And Abilene yeah. Christian, whoo, what a game against Texas. One point wins, squeaking it out. And honestly, yeah. this one's a toss-up, but I have Abilene Christian here. I mean, they have the best turnover margin in the country, and forcing turnovers and not giving the ball up is a really important component of winning basketball games. I mean, they forced 23 turnovers out of Texas and made them look really sloppy at times. So I think Abilene Christian, their defense can do the same thing to UCLA. I got ACU. And what's Nico looking like here? Yeah, Nico's got UCLA. Wow. Once you know what? And, and here's the thing. You saw this in the first round, and we all were like, ah, Nico's picking against us. Hmm, what will happen there? And then all of a sudden Nico won a bunch of his games. But once again, I'm siding with you here. I really like the performance out of Abilene Christian. And like you said, those turnover margin is absolutely huge, especially in a postseason game like this. Emotions are high. The, the stage is the biggest you're going to get. Um, absolutely. And you saw it's what, it's and essential you saw what that you Texas. don't give it up and yeah. that you force turnovers. And there's no better na- team in the nation doing that than Abilene Christian. Yeah, as wild as that is. I mean, you saw what you saw what it did to Texas. Texas is a, a very solid, very uh, – 
They're they're very they're very good. good. Uh, and Abilene Christian gave them fits. All right. Yeah. How are you so doing? I've got moving. I mean, it's yeah, yeah. So the next game here is Maryland versus Alabama. I had UConn beating Maryland. Didn't come to fruition. Maryland defeated UConn by nine points, and Alabama pretty handily pulled away from Iona in the second half and beat them by there 13. for a while. Though I give Iona credit. Yeah, you got to give Rick Pitino and Iona credit. Um, but in this game, I have Alabama. Alabama can absolutely shoot lights out, and if they get down, they can shoot their way back into it. And unlike a team like Iowa, they can get themselves back into a game if they get cold. So. And honestly, Maryland really escaped because of a horrendous game from UConn. UConn did not play well yeah. at all. Came out flat. I got yeah, not Bama, only did which, yeah, which not only did oh sorry yeah no I got Bama here, which is really strange because Nico has Maryland, but I'm not going to question him here. Tim, he's, he's big on the Terrapins, and I mean, uh, like you said, out of that that UConn Maryland game. Not only did UConn have a, have a bad game, but I don't really think that Maryland forced that bad game. I really think they just shot themselves. The they beat they beat themselves. Yeah, um, but out of the second round game, um, from what I saw out of Bama in that first round, I've I've got to take Bama on this one. Um, you saw they struggled for a little bit, but they were able to maintain composure. They've got some great seniors leading that team. They were cold for a while, especially from three, but they were able to to, to keep it even. They were able to, to slash, drive in the lane, get to the free throw line. And I think that's what's going to be able to keep their keep their momentum going and, and keep them from dropping off in, in some of these, these big-time pressure games. So I've got Bama on this one. Yep. The next game we have on the table is Baylor and Wisconsin. Baylor got here by defeating Hartford, another 116. And Wisconsin absolutely – I was so confident in North Carolina beating I was Wisconsin. too. And, and then Wisconsin, Wisconsin absolutely blew out of the rashing on them. And I'm, I, I really I, – I don't know what happened there. But that doesn't change my prediction of this game regardless. And I think, Tim – I think, Tim, you're going to think the same way here. I have Baylor. Nico has Baylor. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say you have Baylor. And we really don't need to say much about this. I mean, whoever won that UNC right that Wisconsin one. game was going to get thrashed regardless. Baylor's a brick wall. And, they're, they're and just good, so good luck to whoever runs into them. Yeah. So I absolutely still have Baylor in this one too. Yeah. The next game here is Villanova versus North Texas. Oh, Tim. Eh. Sad. Yeah. Sad boy hours for Tim. As you can see in the pennant behind him, he had. Oh God, it's on my shirt too. I can't escape. <laughs> nope. You can't escape this one. Uh, nope. North Texas really did upset Purdue. And I was really disappointed in Purdue because I talked them up so much. I mean, here's the thing. Well, Tim and I, this is the, we missed both of these. We thought Winter yeah, was we both. upset Villanova, but Villanova came out and, and rocked them. And then Texas, yeah. in an overtime thriller, beats Purdue. I mean, that just proves the craziness of this tournament. But quite frankly, yeah. I, along with Nico, have Villanova in this game. I mean, Jeremiah Robinson Earl, can he proved that he can lead this team. And Villanova has postseason experience here. I think I'll take them in this game against North Texas. Yeah, and, and this one this one is is tough because obviously, I mean, I thought it was going to be the complete opposite. So did you. Um, and maybe it could be something what I would call loser's bias. Um, but honestly, I got to take North Texas in this one. Um, as, the as, heck not? Exactly. I mean, embra embrace the madness. Um, and from what I saw, Oh, From trust that. me. I oh, I embraced the madness. Yeah, absolutely. I embraced the madness. I already picked Abilene Christian. So did you. And don't worry, we'll we'll hint at the madness later. Yeah. But, From what I saw out of North Texas in that that first game, um, they have a very unique offense that is uh, that is very difficult to guard in some ways if they're on. Uh, for one thing, JV on Hamlet. If you let him get into the lane, good luck guarding his floater. He shoots the he shoots a floater the highest percentage out of anyone in the entirety of the NCAA. And right, he makes it like the highest me. percentage too. Uh, but I just, I, I liked what I saw out of them. They, uh, they, they were able to disrupt Purdue a lot in the first half. Um, Purdue was able to get more of their way in the second half, but they got out, got out to a big enough lead that uh, they were able to hold on to their momentum. And I see them being able to throw Nova off their game as well. So we'll see what the mean green can do. Yep. I mean, that's an interesting pick, but I got to respect it. The next matchup is uh, Texas Tech versus Arkansas. And uh, 
I had Texas Tech winning there, but uh, I, I also had Colgate making kind of a run. I mean, I guess that's what I get for trusting a college named after a toothpaste brand or maybe the other way around, but what do you Hey, doing? we got Oral Roberts here too, so we got <laughs> we got two almost toothpaste. But so the toothpaste I, I, I had confidence in Colgate. Colgate. They kept it close. Um, I talked them up so much at the half, and then they just disintegrated. But in this game, I'll take Arkansas because they showed enough to me like that they were a sleeping giant in the first half that woke up against Colgate in the yeah. second half. And uh, if they come out ready and prepared, Texas tech will not win. I'll, t- I'll take Arkansas, but strangely enough, Nico has Texas tech. So the Tim split that... the decision, like so many others in this video. And that, that's, that's, what's interesting. The man that, that swears uh, beyond his, uh, Texas Tech. He slander. hates Texas Tech, but he picks them <laughs> chooses like a- them to go into the Sweet 16. I, I would love to hear his reasoning for that, but sadly not here with us today. But I got to stay stay true to my picks. Um, as much as I had Colgate coming into this game instead of Arkansas, I'm going to stick with my with, with my original pick, and I'm going to go with Texas Tech coming out of this game. Um, I I think it's I think this one's going to be a bit more of a defensive battle, um, kind of similar to what you saw out of the Texas Tech Utah State game. They were able to hold Utah State to uh, 53 points, which um, some of that may have been Utah State's own doing, but um, I don't think it's going to be a high-scoring game, but I think Mac McClung is going to be able to, to keep these Red Raiders moving onto the Sweet 16. We'll see what happens, but it'll. this is going to be one of my yes. most yes, interesting games to watch. Yes, it is. All right, the next matchup we have on the table is Florida versus Oral Roberts. I mean, I had the exact opposite. I had Tech beating Florida. <laughs> And Ohio State beating Oral Roberts. And Tim, you were there in person at that Ohio State Oral Roberts game. It was what a game. something. It was something to see. It was something to watch at home from my couch. Um, but my prediction here, I we said earlier we're gonna embrace the madness. I'm gonna embrace the madness. Let's go, Oral Roberts. Let's go, Eagles. They're gonna beat Florida. I mean, Max Abmus, Kevin O'Banner, ugh, what an elite duo, a small school with a couple superstars. I think that they can carry the Eagles past the Gators, although I will say Colin Castleton is absolutely frightening. So yeah, absolutely. Who does Nico yeah, got in this match? I got Oral Roberts. Nico is Florida here. Tim, who do you have? Um, I'm absolutely going to embrace the madness. And I saw the madness in person. Yes! Oral Roberts, Oral Roberts looks right, like man. a mean Go team. Oral Roberts. They Admus and O'Banner, man, they they took over in that game. And I envisioned them doing the same here. I don't think Florida's gonna have what it takes to stop them. Yep. Simple as that. Agreed. Next matchup, Illinois versus Loyola. And God, I really want to go to this game because it's at Hinkle and it's yeah. two teams that are Illinois based. This is going to be a fantastic matchup. And if only tickets weren't $400. Oh my gosh. I didn't realize they I were that going. Wow. I would be going to that game. Um, yeah. But I got the Illini here. But although... I, I trust me. I like a line. I, I like a uh, Batman to move, but if there's one team that can trip them up, it's Loyola. So I won't be shocked if Loyola upsets here, but I will most definitely take the Illini. Yeah. How does Nico got this one? Illini. As, as do I, as much as I love the Ramblers, I love their defense. Uh, I, I will say they got off to a bit of a shaky start against uh, Georgia tech, but um, they ended up pulling that one through pretty comfortably. I just, <laughs> The Illini are so, so well put together. They're very good. They're um, very well-rounded. And I just, I don't, I don't see Loyola Chicago stopping them. It, it, it could, it could be a very interesting game though. So certainly one to watch. I, yeah, I want to go to that game, but why are tickets so expensive? Uh, nevertheless, Talk about we, have, madness. we have no, yeah, yeah. We have more games to cover. Oregon yep. State versus Oklahoma State. Oregon State upset Tennessee in a 5-12, which, ugh. I wow. didn't see that one coming, but no, I did not. Tennessee put up a very play. solid performance, so I'll give them a lot of credit for that. And Oklahoma State came away with a tough-earned victory against Liberty, which we knew was going to be tough-earned. Absolutely. But yeah, we both had Oklahoma State. And I'm going to continue to stick with Oklahoma State, as is Nico. Go figure. He loves Cade Cunningham and the Cowboys. And in this matchup, so do I. Cade Cunningham and Avery Anderson star power be too much. Yeah, I, I have to I have to go the same there. I just – Cade Cunningham, Cade Cunningham is a force. Uh, and I just I don't see Oregon State having what it takes to stop him. Uh, even if they get off to a bit of a slow start like they did against Liberty, they were able to persevere, stay calm under pressure, and uh, they proved they deserve to be here. So I got OK State coming through this one. Absolutely. Next matchup, Syracuse versus West Virginia. And uh, 
this was, this was one I was very confident on. I was confident in San Diego State, and uh, they they did not perform. They they didn't they didn't show out like I, I expected them to. No, there was a kid by the name of uh, Buddy. He's not quite an elf from the movie Elf, but good lord, he's an amazing basketball player. He put up some points. Yes, dropping thirty against San Diego State. Yeah. And, uh, we said question is, will he be able to? Buddy Bayheim can show up. Syracuse will win. And you know what? All credit due to West Virginia. They played pretty well against Moorhead State. I've learned my lesson. I'm not betting against Jim Bayheim double digit seeded teams anymore. I got the orange. And uh, Nico has the Mountaineers here. So, who do you have, Tim? Gotcha. Uh, and I'm actually, I'm actually gonna have to to go with the Mountaineers here to split the decision. Um, I really like them as a team. They're a, they're a pretty deep team. Uh, they came out and proved to me in that first game against uh, Moorhead that they were able to to solidify self. That they were they were the good West Virginia team coming in because they've been spotty some games where you didn't know who was going to show up. But they came in and put put a, uh, the right foot forward coming into this tournament. And as much as as much as I like Buddy and that the uh, Syracuse team, um, oh, Buddy, I hope you find your dad. I just I'm I'm not sure I'm not sure if Buddy's going to be able to put up enough points to uh, to edge them out in this one. So I've got the Mountaineers coming out of this one. Yeah, I mean, it's funny that I reference Elf there because Buddy does play for his dad Jim, but this isn't Daddy Ball. This is not Daddy Ball. <laughs> nope, not Buddy at all. And Buddy ball. is legit. <laughs> Buddy is legit. And the last game that we have here is Rutgers versus Houston. And I wish Nico were here for this one. I would love to hear what he has to say about this one. Yeah. Who do you think he picks? I, there's no, I feel there's no way he, he goes against Rutgers on this one. He's, he's got to take it. You'd be wrong. He actually picks Houston and I would love to really? hear why he would love, I would love to hear why, but he's not here to tell us. Hopefully um, I'll put in an editor's note why he, uh, why he picks Houston because huh. I don't know that one, but I'm with him. That's I, perplexing. He, After he talked up Rutgers so much and about how bad he is. He had Rutgers winning this game earlier. He did. He said that Rutgers was going to get. It's, it's very strange. Hmm, interesting. Who do you have? My mind is unchanged from last episode. I mean, I don't think Rutgers is that team, and I think Houston is elite. Although I will say the one thing I was very wrong about, Clemson. I was wrong about yeah, them. They came up. They they did not show I, up like I thought they would either. Yeah, I know. I as much as I had Rutgers in that game, and I, I thought that Clemson that. was, I was going 100% to play hundred percent wrong about Clemson. I talked them up, but my opinion on Rutgers is unchanged. So I I have Houston here. Tim, who do you have? Uh, and I actually have to go three for three on this one. I'm I'm sticking with Houston. I liked Rutgers to win that game, um, but to me they they didn't show me enough in that game to. Uh, to, for me to think that they can get past this high-powered offense at Houston. Houston put up 87 points in that first game. They, they've they got all cylinders rolling heading into the second round, um, and I don't see Rutgers being able to, to muster enough, enough offense to be able to outshoot Houston. Yep. And uh, that's the last game that we have here for the second round of the March Madness tournament. And, oh, boy, if the first round tells us anything, is that that's we're in for We're in for we in quite for a tournament. Treat. So, yeah, that'll do it. You know, we'll be back with the Sweet 16 once the second round games are played. Hopefully we'll have a little bit more time in between. So it's not back to back. It's pretty stressing. We're recording this at one in the morning, the, the day the day before the second round starts. But that's what you got to do to produce good content. But, yeah, I'll yes, be yeah, we have other stuff. Go watch our first round prediction. See how badly Tim and I messed up. We have other <laughs> NCAA content. We have NFL content. We have NBA content. We even have MLB content. We have it all. But yeah, yes, we do. Like, subscribe for more We Sport and content. And yeah. peace. Yeah.